There's three different ways that you can do rivets. Um, well, there's a multiple, but the three different ways that I know, and uh, from thriftiness to easiness, are take a regular sheet of paper, a trusty hole punch, and uh, get real friendly with it, tape it in place, and then we got a series of holes that we can work with. Those are going to be our rivets. That nobody has time for. The second method, which works even uh, less, less well, <laughs> is to actually take your tape and the hole punch and very carefully punch out your rivet holes like that. So, and again, that method sucks too, but it's possible. My recommendation is to find somebody with a sign shop, find somebody that, uh, that owes you money, or maybe you could owe them money, whatever, and uh, go ahead and cut you out uh, these vinyl stencils. Basically, they're just quarter inch holes and half inch strips that alternate around them. So let's get started. Step one, we're gonna get one of these uh, rivet strips off the vinyl here. There should be 50 holes in this strip right here and you want all the pieces. So you definitely don't want it weeded. I'm gonna start with some rivets like right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lay this out. All right, uh, one thing you may not have, may not pick up on, I've actually put a little piece of notebook paper right here so I can spray my test patterns and see. Uh, see what I came up with with my uh, color concoction. Basically, what I've mixed up is a little bit of reducer, some medium gray, which is a very transparent kind of uh, gray. And just to darken it up a little bit, I've put in some uh, detail black. The detail series, I'm told, is supposed to be a little bit more transparent. And that's kind of what we want right now is just kind of build up in layers. So I'm going to put the, uh, the shadow right here, uh, right along this edge, and this bottom edge here. And that's going to be the edge of the panel. And then we're going to go back in and put the shadows at the bottom of the rivets. Now remember, I'm going for a very beaten up, ward kind of look here. That's the, the theme is, uh, you know, like war damage. So I'm going to take this a lot darker than, uh, than probably what you, what you would do. Like I'm going to put a lot of wet, I'm going to weather this. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to think of. I'm going to weather this. I'm, this is all done on white. Normally, you'll use white as a highlight color if you're doing this on, say, green. Or, well, I, I, I say green because I just did a green helmet and I did rivets all over the helmet and I use white as a highlight to try to force highlights on something that's two-dimensional. In this example, since how we already have white as our background color, is I'm going to overshade everything. Now, again, normally what you would do in a situation like this um, if it was any other color, you come to the opposite side of the rivet that we just sprayed and spray white. And that's going to show up as a leading edge with the shadow. So now we pull off our mask. This is where it gets fun. Your uh, handy dandy X-Acto knife and let the fun begin. Just 
Little Ron Dots. Little Ron Dots here. I said that uh, I, I promised that we were going to need. Yeah, you guessed it. This is where it kind of gets tricky. You don't want to spray where you would think you want to spray. You want to spray on the opposite side. For example, you would think the shadow would be on the bottom. Uh, let's see, three, four, about five, four thirty, five o'clock. You would think is where you want the shadow. You don't. You want it on the opposite side. It creates the illusion that the steel in front of the rivet is pushed down just a little bit. Again, my technique, I start in the center of the rivet and I do a little circle till I get to the outside. For this kind of detail stuff, you gotta keep that tip clean. Tip dry is, is the enemy, but it's inevitable. Now, don't feel like you gotta be perfect on every one of these. You gotta be consistent. Perfection is uh, perfection's not required. You think about the real stuff? It ain't perfect. Right now I'm putting a couple little random shadows in there. And that helps uh, with the random shadows, that helps create the illusion of the, uh, the old and beat up look that I was going for. Surface imperfections. Incidentally, it's also a really good technique for covering up mistakes. So now the next stage, pull all them stupid masks back off. And this one, this is, uh, this stage actually is very hard because um, you don't want to scratch any of the paint that you put down underneath and you don't want to scratch any of the paint that's on top. So go slow and take your time. Another little technique I've done to actually help sell it, sell the rivets, is, uh, and that's not going to come out perfect because there's a little section there that ain't right, but you could actually do something along those lines, a little bit darker. You can see now that that uh, it's got a whole different feel to it now. We don't really even care if it's consistent all the way across. Shadows aren't really consistent, are they? I know you're sitting at home like I used to watch Bob Ross, and I used to sit at home and yell at him and say, Stop, stop, you're messing it up. I know, you just what you guys are doing right now, right? Stop, it was perfect, you're messing it up. So those are rivets. Uh, like I said, the last video was the torn metal. So if you're watching this one and you didn't see the other one, go check that out. If that's something that might interest you. A lot of good stuff. I try to put stuff on the internet that I feel people want to watch. So if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. Send me an email. Two tin cans and a string, whatever. Just uh, drop me a line and we'll put a video out. So, take in some of this uh, little sexiness over here, and uh, that's how rivets are done.